जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ सेटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी कवरिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड डेफिनेटली वन क्वेश्चन विल कम ऑन दिस टॉपिक एंड द टॉपिक इज डायरेक्ट ब्रॉडकास्ट सेटेलाइट टीवी एंड रिसीवर ओके सो टुडे आई एल बी कवरिंग दिस ब्लॉक डायग्राम ऑफ डी बी एस टी वी एंड रेडियो पार्ट द ओवरऑल एरर डिटेक्शन एंड करेक्शन ऑफ दिस डी बी एस टी वी and it's it's a very important topic for those who are studying this kc062 code so let's have it so to uh, first we will talk about the basic history um we all know that uh, you know before this uh, digital era we will be have we, we would be having this uh, analog type of tv okay and uh, and and, uh, and we also remember the picture quality and everything was totally different entirely different uh, uh, type of uh, scenario was there we would be using a signal which will be receiving uh, which we were receiving from a very large dish antenna and the cable operator was there we, he used to send uh, the signal through cable wire okay so that was entirely different setup that we were using earlier uh now in uh, dbs tv era uh, our signal is purely digital and we are receiving signal directly from satellite okay uh, so because of that the picture quality and everything has been improved and there is no interference of third party between you and the service provider right so the video distribution and direct broadcast tv uh, have become a major source of revenue for the satellite communication industry so be before this uh, you know video distribution earlier the satellite applications were very limited but uh, with the introduction of this uh, uh, video distribution and radio broadcasting uh, the the complete scenario of this uh, satellite communication has changed and a very huge revenue uh, has been generated and still we are uh, getting with the help of this uh, application of dbs tv in satellite communication uh, at the end of 1998 a total revenue earned by all satellite communication entities worldwide was estimated at uh, 30 billion dollar um out of this total 17 billion dollar was estimated to have been earned by the video distribution and dbs tv only okay so you can see uh, the major chunk was uh, because of this uh, dbs tv a rapid growth of digital dbs tv may increase the percentage of the industry's revenues that come from video services even further during the first decade of 2000 and many satellite communication systems that were designed for voice and data transmission have ended up distributing the tv signals okay the revenue available from entertainment television have become a major uh, driver in the satellite communication industry see uh, we can we can we can uh, easily catch up uh, the main application of satellite so so the first uh, and the foremost is the digital tv and the second is the gps right so these are the two major uh, satellite applications also uh, i mean we have lot many application of satellite communication nowadays you know weather forecasting internet everything is there with the help of satellite communication but yes in earlier scenario these were the two major um, you know uh, applications which have completely changed uh, the revenue uh, generation of satellite communication In 2001 two direct broadcast satellite radio services began operation in the United States using S band frequencies the satellite uh, provides a wide range of radio programming aimed primarily at uh, driver of road vehicle repeaters are used in the city areas to overcome the problem of satellite visibility around tall buildings now you can enjoy your uh, radio broadcasting anywhere and um, also um, while moving while uh, you know traveling you can enjoy tv you can enjoy satellite you can enjoy radio okay so this has been done with the help of this application in 1990s digital video transmission became feasible and several system were developed in the usa in 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz band allocated to dbs tv services so in dbs tv what we are using we are generally using the ku band okay and the range of frequency is 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz which was allocated uh, with the, this band is allocated for this dbs tv services with the development of low cost ku band antennas and receivers and the high speed digital ics specifically designed for dbs tv incorporates with the qpsk demodulation 
error control, decompression and MPEG decoding made DPS TV practical. Okay, so uh, see, uh, anything cannot be generated alone. Okay, uh, it the the overall uh, development is going parallel with other industries like uh, the chip manufacturing, like the frequency availability, like the uh, you know compatible antennas for that particular frequency band. So all this evolution uh, were going in parallel with each other. So the outcome is the pure digital DPS TV application. Digital signal processing is incorporated in a single IC that uh, implements the digital video standard used by DBS TV uh, uh, si si signal, okay, D uh, which is known as DBS S. A large volumes in which DBS TV receivers have been manufactured have allowed the cost of a receiving system to be reduced steadily since the start of DBS TV services. So, here these are the simple uh, dish antenna that uh, we can see in our terrace, in our balcony that we used to pit, put to get the signal from the satellite. A direct TV receiving antenna which will be mounted on the wall of a house is shown in figure that I have already shown and a dish network antenna mounted on a post is also mentioned. Now, I will in next slide I will show you the block diagram of DBS TV. Uh, see, I will tell you the basic of that block diagram. So, this, the basic of that uh, block diagram, it has been uh, divided into three major part. First is the part which is mounted on the antenna, okay, which is known as low noise block, okay. So, your signal will be received by the antenna which is mounted on terrace or in the balcony, okay. That antenna will be receiving directly signal from the satellite. Okay, then we have the low noise block. Okay, we have the low noise block. Then, with the help of cable wire, that signal is coming to our set top box. In the set top box, there is a circuitry that is providing the facility to demodulate and you know filter the signal. The, after that set top box, we are also having the remote from which we are giving the signal. Then, uh, we have the output which will be displayed on the TV screen. Okay, so this is the main block of this uh, DBS TV receiver. So, first we will discuss about the low noise block that is mounted on the antenna. The entire front end of the receiver is located at the antenna feed. Front end means the, the part of the receiver block which will be facing the signal, right. So, which is uh, mounted on the antenna feed in the form of an uh, and low noise block to minimize loss of signal and hence to maintain the lowest possible uh, system noise temperature. So, uh, what is the system noise temperature? There is uh, uh, a noise uh, error that is there in each and every part of the receiver block which is generating a noise temperature and that because of that uh, noise temperature, we will be having the noise power and that noise power is deteriorating your signal. So, we have to reduce the noise temperature. So, the overall noise temperature of a complete receiver is known as system noise temperature. So, what we are trying to do? We are trying to reduce the system noise temperature to improve the quality of signal. As your signal is traveling from satellite to earth, so your signal will be distorted, right? So, the first part of this uh, receiver block is used to uh, reduce the loss of that signal and to reduce the system noise temperature. So, the, this front end which is located on the antenna feed will be used to minimize the loss of signal and then how we can minimize the loss of signal? We can minimize the loss of signal by giving the amplification. So, maximum amplification is given at, uh, at this uh, front end okay, and that we can do with the help of IF amplifiers. So, I will be covering in the next slide. Then the electronic polarizer is switched by changing the voltage supply to the low noise block via the cable that interconnects the antenna and set top box receiver. The entire band, the band of frequencies 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz, this much range is coming from the satellite to earth. Uh, so, for what we will do? Um, we will first convert this 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz to the lower one 
and what is that range range is 900 to 1400 megahertz so our first process will be to reduce the signal from gigahertz to megahertz okay how much gigahertz 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz so your signal will be down converted from 12.2 to 12.7 to 900 to 1400 megahertz why in this megahertz range because we have the components which are compatible with this frequency and also we can provide you the amplification at this frequency range and also at this frequency range the cable losses are much lower than the KU band. KU band is this one. So, it will directly receive the signal and it will give this frequency to our set of box then there will be huge losses. So, what we will do first we will down convert the signal and then what we will do we will amplify the signal filter the signal and we will process the signal right. And the down converter consists of a dielectric resonator local oscillator. So, how we can down convert the signal? First, this signal is coming and here we have the mixer. So, this signal is from 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz signal. And what we want from output? We want output of 900 to 1400 megahertz. So, what we will do? We will have one local oscillator here. We will have one local oscillator here and we will generate a frequency, that frequency so that the addition or subtraction from this to this will be this. So, the frequency generation is done based on what output we want. So, output is 900 to 1400 megahertz, right? So, what we will do? We will generate a frequency so that if we subtract or add that frequency into the signal, then the output will be 900 to 1400 megahertz. Okay, so then uh, followed uh, this this mixer is followed by IF amplifier and a bandpass filter. So this is the complete block diagram of your DPS TV receiver. Students, you need to learn each and every part of this block, and I'll tell you how simply you can learn this. Very simply, you can learn this block diagram. It's very simple, not complicated. I'll explain each and every part of this. So here, uh, as I told you. This is the front end. This is the front end. Okay, front end means the low noise block. It means here your satellite is giving the signal, and the signal is coming uh, at this frequency band. This is the dish, dish antenna which is mounted on your terrace. Okay, and then at this dish antenna, we have the low noise block. So, what we will do? We will convert this 12.2 uh, to 12.7 gigahertz to 900 to 1400 gigahertz. So, this low noise block will be converting your signal from 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz to 900 to 1400 megahertz. Okay, so here this signal is coming. So, the very first of any RF receiver is the low noise amplifier. I have many, I have told you many times in my class that whenever you are drawing a circuit of a super heterodyne receiver or an RF receiver, then you have to draw the first block which will be the low noise amplifier. Okay, and the purpose of this low noise amplifier is to amplify each and every bit of the signal and to give the low uh, to reduce the effect of noise. Then we have the bandpass filter. Okay, so the purpose of this bandpass filter is to remove the unwanted signal which are coming along with this 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz. So, first this low noise amplifier is put and then we have kept the image rejection bandpass filter. Then we have the mixer. So, the mixer is nothing but the uh, this, this one that I told you. So, this is the mixer that I have kept here, okay. Um, and the local oscillator frequency that I am generating here is 11.3 gigahertz. And from where uh, we are getting 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz. So, if you minus this 12.2 minus 11.3 gigahertz and 12.2 minus 11.3 gigahertz, then you will be receiving a signal ranging from 900 to 1400 megahertz. 
ओके सो माइंड सिग्नल इज नाउ कन्वर्टेड फ्रॉम गीगा हर्ट्स टू मेगा हर्ट्स देन आई हैव केप्ट वन आई एफ एम्पलीफायर स्टेज हेयर द पर्पज ऑफ आई एफ एम्पलीफायर इज टू गिव यू द मैक्सिम एम्पलीफिकेशन इन द सिग्नल so here this maximum amplification is given the signal and then further this high power amplifier is kept here so this whole block is not the part of set up box this whole block is kept at the antenna feed okay then we have the cable wire so so this is the cable wire coaxial cable okay this is the coaxial cable which is uh taking the signal from the uh, the antenna and giving the signal to the set top box you can see at your home like uh, there is one wire which is connected from your uh, antenna to the set top box now this is the part of set top box this is a complete setup of your set top box so the range of frequency is 900 to 1400 megahertz then again we have kept one if amplifier in the set top box so whenever your signal is entering into set top set top box first it will be if amplified signal and then we have a tuned bandpass filter select transponder so i will tell you what is the purpose of this bandpass filter here then we have a mixer here so uh, we we have the purpose of this mixer i'll tell you what is the purpose of this mixer so first we will understand that we have a microprocessor okay we have a smart microprocessor here now i have one remote here and i want to see okay yes i want to see aaj tak okay fine so let's go for 280 channel right there would be some number which is allocated to your uh, to your favorite channel right so i i have just you know push 234 right so i have put 234 i have entered that signal or uh, information from my tv remote to the set top box right so now your set top box will see the 234 number and then based on the pre decided list of signals or you can say the numbers okay one number is allocated to this frequency two number is allocated to this frequency 234 is allocated to this frequency so there is a table and that is controlled by this microprocessor so this information is given by the remote this input is given by the remote and this microprocessor will give that information to two part first this information is given to the antenna so here you can see the same signal is given to this antenna the same signal is given to this tuned bandpass filter and also the same signal is given to this frequency synthesizer okay so what is the purpose of this frequency synthesizer in frequency synthesizer i have a list of or, or you can say a table of frequencies and along with the numbers okay so 234 at what frequency is there then i can check from my frequency synthesizer so that will decide my local oscillator frequency okay now the same signal is given to antenna okay so because your antenna is polarized so what channel you want to see so based on your polarization will be changed okay i want to see 234 now the my polarization of antenna will be like that so that i can easily catch up that signal right okay then uh, okay so then that that information is also given to this tuned bandpass uh, filter select transponder so this will be uh, using to select the from which transponder i want to receive the signal okay and then that frequency will will be given to the mixer now i have you know i have thousands of frequency or thousands of channels i have now i want to see 234 number of channel and at 234 of channel let's say it is kept at uh, 70 megahertz okay so i want to catch the signal which is at 70 megahertz so to get that 70 megahertz i have entire spectrum available and i want to extract on this 70 megahertz so because of that i have a tuned local oscillator here so the frequency which is given by tuned local oscillator and frequency which i am receiving from here it will be subtracted and then output should be 70 megahertz because my desired channel is at 70 megahertz so the output will be now 70 megahertz which is my favorite channel right and now uh, again i have a bandpass filter here okay to reduce other frequencies if some part is there and then i have the frequency amplifier again i have amplifier i have kept here then what i will do i will demodulate the signal now i will convert my signal into a normal baseband form okay so i'll use kpsk demodulator 
then base band amplifier because after demodulation mouse my signal is converted into a normal base band signal so base band amplifier is there then this complete lower block is nothing but the error detection and correction the lower part so first we i have the inner decoder then i have d interleaver then outer decoder then digital d multiplexer mpeg2 decoder and then d by a uh, d2a converter okay so this lower one is the error detection and correction process that i'll be covering in the next slide so these are the part which i have used to uh, correct my error which can be there with the help of bits now i have the mpeg2 uh, decoder is a special uh, decoder uh, which is generally used uh, to decode the compressed data okay our video signal and audio signal are uh, transmitted in a compressed form so to again uh, get the proper signal what i have kept here mpeg2 decoder i have kept here so that i can extract my actual signal from the compressed one <clears throat> okay so uh, here i can see uh, the explanation the high gain low, uh, low noise block can drive 100 meter of coaxial cable without any reduction in signal quality where longer cables runs are needed amplifier for 900 to 1400 megahertz band can be used to boost the signal strength so sometime you can see that uh, there there is a huge distance from your terrace to your bedroom or drawing room where you want to keep your tv or the set top box so what i need i need some boost uh, boosters there so if uh, the length is more or longer cables are required then we have to provide some boosters to improve the signal strength set top box accept the entire 500 megahertz band and separates out the individual transponder frequencies so as i told you that uh, 900 to 1400 there is a 500 megahertz band which is available with me and now <clears throat> my transponder will decide on which frequency band i want to go any one of these frequencies and the corresponding polarization can be selected on the demand by user so as i told you in this diagram that uh, this uh, this this here we have the entire range is available now i am selecting my uh, transponder with the help of this and i am i am changing my antenna so that it can get the signal okay i am changing the polarization of antenna so that it can directly uh, catch the signal from satellite okay because uh, you cannot you know you cannot imagine that uh, a small antenna can get the signal the entire signal at any time okay so we have to change the polarization of antenna so all these things are uh, you know uh, are uh, done very fast so that you cannot you know um, you cannot uh, check um, uh, you cannot imagine how fast it can be happen so the polarization is changed and the transponder required transponder is selected here and then i can select any frequency from the entire 500 megahertz band okay uh, the user entered a desired channel number into the set top box using the infrared remote control for example channel 362 is selected which is converted via a stored lookup table in the receiver to an rf channel frequency so this 362 is just a number but in communication we talk about the uh, frequencies or the spectrum so we have to you know convert this 362 into the equivalent frequency which is already stored in the uh, table lookup table okay so that is done the signal from the required transponder is then selected by the receiver by setting the correct polarization of the antenna and timing the set top local oscillator to the appropriate IF channel frequency the QPSK signal is then demodulated the result is a multiplex bit stream typically about a bit rate of 40 mbps which contain the bits for the channel 362 and several other video signal also received the bit stream is encrypted and contains error control coding bits and data bits so you the bit you are uh, receiving are not only the bit of your desired channel but also some error correction bits are there now the bit stream is processed to correct and detect error and de interleaved and decrypted so this is part of the error correction part a digital demultiplexer then extract the bit for the wanted channel 
then 360 in this example send them to a mpeg2 decoder and finally generates the analog video and audio signal so if your tv is digital tv then directly you can get the signal if it is analog then it will be converted to digital to analog the lookup table in the receiver that relate the channel number to frequency polarization and instructions for tdm multiplexers demultiplexer is demodulated from satellite on a regular schedule this allows the service provider to change the transponder which carries a particular signal and to alter the mix of signal on a given transponder as required without the customer being aware of these changes i mean what whenever these changes are occurring you never imagine you are you are never aware that changing of transponder is there changing of polarization is there so this everything is done very fast satellite is also used to address individual receiver and to load another lookup table that is specified which channel the user is authorized to receive sometime you can you can you can select a channel which for which you are not authorized so a message can be pop up like you are not authorized for this channel if the user fails to pay his or her bills to the service provider the receiver will eventually be instructed to show only a message that it has been disconnected for failure to make timely payment of the service uh this process involves a smart card which identify that uh, each receiving system and enables decryption of the satellite signal you can see there is one smart card which is inserted uh, behind your set top box so this information is stored in that smart box high level of protection applied to the dbs tv signal which is intended to prevent unauthorized uh, reception by users to have not paid monthly fee okay um now uh, i'll tell you what uh, how this error control in digital uh, dbs tv is done so this is the transmitter side and this is the receiver side okay so as we know in digital communication we have studied that we have different type of coding line coding channel coding and source coding we are doing so the same coding applies here also because you are using qpsk so there can be some chances of error that can be occurred so because of that we want to have some error detection and correction method so here your data input is provided into a reed solomon encoder then you have an interleaver and then convolutional encoder so these are the part which is which we are doing at the transmitter side this is the channel and now at the receiver what we are doing first we are first doing the convolutional decoding then the reverse of this which is the d interleaver that we are doing and then after that we have the reed solomon decoder so this is very important part of this uh, complete process because uh, if, if any single bit is changed then it can affect your overall signal quality so uh, this is the data output that we can have here okay this i have already covered um so dbs tv uplink earth station uh, this is very uplink means from earth station to satellite so here we have the analog to digital video signal then we have mpeg2 encoder then multiplexer then c uh, reed solomon encoder these are the part that i have i have already covered in the previous slide interleaver and convolution encoder this is the part of earth station then we have qpsk modulator if amplifier up converter low power amplifier high power amplifier multiplexer and then here we have 70 gigahertz uplink antenna which is used in the dbs tv so this whole process is done from the main earth station from where your signal is transmitted or the broadcasted so it can be from your service provider from where you are receiving the service so this earth station is controlled by your service provider okay and here you can see that uh, the transmission frequency of uplink is 70 17 gigahertz uplink antenna that we are using here this is the explanation of this uh, which is mentioned here these are the references that i have used in this slide thank you